Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jump Up Supercast, the only podcast on the internet where I didn't think of an intro this week. I'm your host, Will, and joining us today, Brandon. Hold on. How do you spell Bowsette again? Uh, two T's. Okay, good. N- Noah. I don't think, I couldn't think of a greeting this week, but I usually never do anyway, so. It's the same. Saf. No one's prepared for this. What the fuck is going on with this podcast? And Musimil. I'm pretty prepared, I'm not gonna lie. I'm ready to go. I'm ready the one, to... The one constant still alive. Saf swearing in the intro. Yes. <laughs> that, we, we, we change everything else about the intro all the time, and you know, this, and, but this, that, that's the one constant. If Saf's on the episode, you'll know, because you'll hear us. You, you'll hear it a swear word if, immediately, if, right after If you that. see the rating change from a T to an E for everyone, then you can tell that I'm not part of that episode. Yeah. Well, no, I was going to say it's going to be an E for explicit, but thankfully no one at Apple's listening to us, which is not <laughs> <laughs> uh, But, you know, it's fine. Boys, I hope you're ready. We have about an hour and 15 minutes to work with here until Muzumil must leave us, and we're going to dedicate all of it to Bowsette. Oh, uh, when, yeah, yeah. I mean, when we did the Rank of Mania last week, I thought this is going to be old hat by the time the next podcast comes around. But it's back, baby, and it's canon. Look up the Mario Odyssey art book. They were going to make a Peach Bowser. They they were cowards. They didn't do it. We're brave enough to. Mm-hmm. Now we get to rank our we get to rank our best Bowser pictures. Yes, King Boo is high tier. We're gonna we're not gonna do that. That's gonna be a very special episode. Please look forward <laughs> to it. Uh, like our you know it's gonna be, it'll be like the Christmas special. <laughs> it's just is the Bowser <laughs> ranking. Um, but how are we doing this week, boys? Doing oh, great. I don't know. It was a bad week for. Well, we'll get to it. I guess that was last week, though, right? I don't know when that was. It was. Well, it's it was two last weeks. week. Yeah. It was last week, and, and that's part of it. We got we got two weeks of news to get to here, um, because of the Rankomania last week. And I guess we'll get first and foremost to uh, the sad news. Uh, we had two pretty major studios closing um, in the last fourteen days. First off, around Wednesday of last week, uh, Vancouver, Capcom Vancouver, that is, the people that have produced every Dead Rising game basically since Dead Rising 2, and also worked on the Pocket Fighter remake uh, mobile port that they just up- that they just canceled a couple months ago, has been shut down. Uh, we talked earlier, a couple months back, how they were how they were side downscaling to focus on a smaller uh, t- title for Dead Rising. It now appears that we're getting no titles from them on Dead Rising because they were all um, unfortunately let go. Mm. So, of course, always a shame. Always unfortunate. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm sad, man. I'm so yeah, sad. it's a feel Yeah, bad. and like, the thing is like, I guess Capcom's really feeling themselves with, you know, they, 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 they got pretty big hits in Japan, right, from Monster mm-hmm. Hunter World. Well, I guess that's the only one so far, but, you know, DMC5 and RE2 Make are coming. Um, and so this is kind of like the opposite of last year. I don't know if you remember, but last year in Capcom was all about West, the West, the West, the West. Yeah. Right. Good old day and, and, you know, we've seen time and time again that kind of failed. Um, the last few Dead Risings d- didn't do so well, unfortunately. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I guess you could kind of see this coming, but it, it's kind of sad. And like, I, I feel like it's more Capcom's misdirection than anything, but you know. Yeah, I mean, it's hard because Dead Rising was a series that we can say, you know, from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, I mean, two, 1 and 2 were both successful, but then from 3 to 4, there was sort of a downward trend. And then with the Pocket Fire, I mean, the, uh, what should we call it? Puzzle Fighter. Puzzle uh, Fighter was just a dumpster fire, you know? Yeah, it, it's like, it's like... It lasted Capcom, two months before they before they pulled it from the store. Capcom um, does not understand the mobile market, you know? Uh, no. And, and that's uh, yeah, and I mean that's another big part of the, of their whole process is they took all their Monster Hunter money a couple of years ago and put it all into trying to figure out mobile, and they just can't do it. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's like this, you know, this is just like kind of, in a way, it's kind of. I hope it's the end of a chapter of just you know really long mismanagement from Capcom from the last decade, you know. Yeah. Um, because they I, were sort of the last one standing of that group. Yeah, because. Uh, all their other Western initiatives, like those, are done, right? Like they stopped working with Ninja Theory, you know. Uh, I don't remember who made Lost Planet, but like, I don't. They don't work with those guys anymore, right? No. And, yeah. So it's like, 
Yeah, it, it's just their ja- it's it, the only development guys they have now is in Japan, and you know we we are seeing like Monster Hunter World was a huge success, like I said, and hopefully DMC five and RE two make as well. But like, I just I guess it's just like a shift in strategy for Capcom. But well, I mean, Resident yeah. Evil Resident Evil seven to them was a failure, even though it sold like what four million copies. Yeah, it sold like four mil, but like yeah, and but was like, that a failure? It, they, nothing compared like to previous it, Resident Evil. Well, I guess is the issue. The, well, the I think the thing is. They set the bar too high, so to them it's yeah. a failure. By any normal standards, Resident <laughs> Evil Seven yeah. did great. Mm, so yeah. Four million copies. You know, there's so many developers out there that would beg for that, right? Yeah. Mm. But for Capcom, they looked at it and they they like I think their goal was like five million in like the launch week, which was it's the stupidest Unfeasible. goal. Yeah. yeah, come on. Uh, and I think, I mean, Resident Evil 7 especially also had a Sins of the Father situation going on where, like, Resident Evil 6 was so poorly received and the state of Resident Evil was in a very not good place where Resident Evil 7 launched. And I think it had that to fight against, right? Like, oftentimes, the entry that gets maligned will still sell well. It's the t- it's the one that comes after that tends to struggle. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, you know, I think that's partially what happened with Dead Rising, I mean overall, especially with 3 and 4. Where 3 was the launch exclusive on the on for the xbox one and then four got minimal marketing it was you know it was it was just a strange thing that like came in too right like a lot of people didn't even realize that rising four came out i think it was a timed exclusive too right like it was it was only on xbox for like a year i want to say maybe i I think so it was timed but i don't know what the the thing is like you would think you would remember a timed exclusive because you know usually exclusives get bigger marketing and all that right but like no there was no push for dead rising 4 whatsoever you know yeah like it it came out it came and went you know yeah it's a shame so i mean it's unfortunate i mean thankfully uh vancouver is sort of a growing game space so hopefully they they can find work because there there are studios that are opening there relatively often i see on twitter um, yeah, I hope those guys can land on their feet, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, the other one, speaking of landing on their feet and, and having a hard drop, uh, Telltale got shut down. Um, that, like, I, you know, I I don't think anyone really saw this coming, right? It was just kind of out of nowhere. No. Right? I definitely, yeah. in not a million years, saw this coming. And it yeah, hit, like, it we're hit in the middle hard. of The Walking Dead Season 4, right? Like, it honestly <laughs> yeah. made me depressed at yeah. you know, just thinking I, about it. Yeah, at first they weren't pressing actually, F on my keyboard. <laughs> the first announcement straight up was like um, they weren't shutting down. De- well, they were going to be downsizing quite significantly, but they were going to be planning on still continuing to make certain games. But then as the week progressed, it just kind of got worse and worse. It's like, oh no, we're not going to make any more new games. We're just going to downsize and only keep like 25 people and fire off, lay off like over 300 which is kind of yeah. And yeah, but basically those twenty five people are just the skeleton crew to like to keep the company like existing. Yeah. You know, like so that way because like, they have agreement know. with, and we'll get to this. The games they had in development, um, one of them was a like a interactive narrative game for Minecraft Story Mode Season Two that was going to be on Netflix. So you were going to pick, you were going to load it up on Netflix to play the game. Uh, yeah. um, which was which was going to be crazy, and you know, and you as you make the choices, you go to the next episode, and, and it goes accordingly. Um, I think they're still trying to fulfill that obligation, but like Saf said, Walking Dead the final season is canceled. The Wolf Among Us season two is canceled. Um, you know, every every other announced Stranger game they things. had, uh, Stranger Things is also uh, sort of gone. Guardians of the Galaxy. No, no, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians that of the happened. Galaxy that, was that finished. finished. Oh, that was yeah. Now the weird thing though is like, so they said the walk. Now they say that the wa- with the Walking Dead that partners have ex- like uh, other companies yes. have expressed interest in finishing up the product, the the game. I guess I don't know if the writing is done or not. I don't. I would no. They right- said the writers oh, no. said they were in the process of writing episode episode three and four. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. When they so, were like, oh, so. so like, I mean, even then, it's going to be different from what it was going to be, you know? Yeah. And uh, That's very upsetting. And it's just a weird thing, too, right? Because it's like, you know, they laid these guys off, no severance, no no, nothing like that, right? Yeah. Uh, for them to continue to make money off of that Walking Dead Season 4... They took it off. The mar- They took it off. It's gone. You can't buy it anymore. Oh, you can't buy it anymore, You really? can't buy okay. it anymore, no. That's, no. yeah. I wonder... Uh, but they're not giving refunds, probably, right? They're not, no, which is very upsetting. I bought it. I I love the Walking Dead uh, Telltale games, man. Mm-hmm. Like, they really... 
have just been some of my favorite games over the past couple of years, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I feel like I maybe I don't talk about it all the time. Maybe I do. I don't really know. But I love those games. Mm-hmm. And, and man, it's just like it's it's really disappointing because I've like especially the whole story. Like it is. It's been a like a well well crafted, well told story with you know an amazing character in Clementine that we're not going to be able to see the ending that you know they were planning for us and that's just super disappointing and you know yeah i paid 20 dollars, and of course i'm upset about that but i'm just more upset over the fact of not being able to see the end of that story yeah especially because in video games it's rare to get stories that is like you know clementine's been there from the first essentially you know the very first second of, of season one all the way through you're seeing this character go f- from a child into a teenager into an adult you don't yeah. get those types of stories often in video games and no. so to see it just go unfinished is upsetting um and, yeah and like I, I guess like later on now people are noticing like oh wow like their sales just dropped off a cliff after the walking dead yeah. season one right yeah uh, except with the exception for minecraft but even then it's like ah uh, Telltale has a really unique space, you know? There's no one really making games like those, you know? Life and is I, Strange is really the only... Besides, uh, yeah, Life is Strange. And so, like, to see basically that entire, like, type of game just is basically going to disappear. That's really sad, you know? Yeah, like, and, and the idea of, like, an episodic game, right? Like, we had those for a while, but, but Walking Dead Season 1 was the one that sort of broke it through in a way where right? you saw the benefits of an episodic format, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, the same way you watch a movie and just like looking through their their games developed in preparation for this podcast like one i think it's very fun, funny that like the first like episodic game they made was csi three dimensions of murder right like back in 2006 right like uh, for a very long time they made like five different csi games right like they but like they slowly worked their way up they got do you remember like the first time i ever heard of them was the strong bad game based off yeah, the, the flash cartoons yeah Man, and I was a big fan of the Wallace and Gromit games back on yes. the Xbox. I loved Wallace and Gromit. So, yeah. like, I was just really into those games. They were great. Yeah, and then you see them, they got, you know, like, they worked with, so they got Sam and Max, and then they got Tales of Monkey Island from there, and it just kept going and going until eventually, you know, The Walking Dead Season 1 blows up. And I think it has the problem that a lot of companies do when one game blows up is like, we have to grow, we have to expand, we have to keep this going, but the management doesn't know how to manage a company that big, Yeah. Um, which sort of seems like the story of, of Telltale because the former president, I don't want to get too much into the weeds of things, but the former president was ousted last year uh, by vote. He did not leave of his own accord. Um, and the end. The new president said that he essentially said that like he was trying to work to make the studio viable again because of how it had been mismanaged prior and he was unable to apparently they were just waiting for a contract to come through for another season of the walking dead it didn't come through by the day they needed to and they didn't have money to keep the lights on basically yeah you yeah. could tell it like like you could tell there was clear signs that it was mismanaged from um, the moment it blew up when you had like so many different games that were announced but they kept delaying release dates like the engine I mean, hasn't been yeah completely... they've taken on yeah they, they, yeah they so the engine hasn't really improved that much there was only like one uh, improvement that happened later later on with, with Batman I believe and it's like there was yeah. not much in the way, in way of advancement in like the technology they used to create these games they still had certain glitches in it and it's just yeah. there's not there was not enough manpower or time to just take on all these projects that they kept getting contracts for. Yeah, I mean, I remember like the Game Awards, or maybe it was it wasn't the Game Awards; it was like VGX or whatever. In the year The Walking Dead blew up huge, it was the year it won Game of the Year, and I think they announced Game of Thrones, Batman, and Tales from the Borderlands all on the same night. Yeah, and they say, and they say, and we're gonna do more episodes of Wolf Among Us all in the span of one night. And I was like, can they do this? <laughs> and the answer was. Like, they could, but, like, you, you saw as time went on, the games got a little bit more janky, a little bit more glitchy, and, and the engines started to struggle more and more. Um, and so, you know, it's just sort of this thing where it's hard, though, because, like, you know, they clawed their way up for a very long time to become, you know, a, a developer that, like, people know, right? Yeah. Like, people responded to this one closing down a lot more than, like, Capcom Vancouver because people, Telltale was distinctive in where it was in the gaming space. Mm-hmm. And, uh... For sure. Obviously, none of the... 
Uh, it always sucks to see people lose their jobs, but you know, uh, employees on Twitter are talking about not getting severance pay, not getting any, you know, their health insurance was gone. Insurance was gone the day that they were fired. Essentially, you know, like by the time they found out <laughs> that they were out of their job, when they went back to their work, their emails had already been shut down. So they couldn't have any of their contacts brought over, you know, really just cool. a, a rough situation. And so like, obviously, you know, some of these people are, uh, have done incredible work and hopefully they can find places to land on their feet. Yeah. Is, is always the sentiment that we want to offer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, that's heavy rough a little bit. Uh, but you know, I, it's worth talking about, uh, to remember, you know, the, the good games that they made. And obviously these people aren't dead, but, uh, you know, rest in peace to telltale itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was other news that happened this week. Uh, First and foremost, I guess we'll get to it today because it was just, we got a little follow-up today. Xbox has a new conference. Very rarely do we get these. Uh, I don't know how you say this out loud. X18 is how I'm going to describe it, but it's like 2018, but put the the, uh, capital X in front of the two instead of the two, excuse me. It worked a lot better in the 2000s when they had these conferences because you could just say like, it was like X05. X05, yeah. much easier. Uh, yeah. But you mentioned that there was old ones. This is a thing that I completely forgot about until it was brought back up again. Um, but do you remember when when Microsoft used to do these like fan events sort of conferences back in the mid 2000s? I genuinely uh, don't. Like this is the I first don't either. Thing. It's the first time I had personally heard of it. Well, but... I mean, t- to tell you some stuff that happened to some of these, this, this is where they announced that they bought Rare. This is where they yeah. showed off Halo 2 for the first time. This is the first time they show, they they uh, announced the launch games for an Xbox 360. You know, like, historically, they've actually had pretty major announcements of these things. And uh, while we don't know the exact specifics of what will be announced, obviously, it's coming in November. Um, and they said that there will be first and third party announcements. Uh, so that is interesting, I've, but it's I find more it interesting, interesting that Rare, I mean... Phil Spencer specifically mentioned how they had announced the Rare acquisition. That was the one events. he name dropped, yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if mm. a studio acquisition announcement is going to happen here as well. Oh, maybe. Uh, Big old uh, we studio know, we know, acquisition. We know they've been hungry for first party studios, you know? Mm-hmm. We know we know that they're looking at, out for a lot of them. And so I'm very interested. And obviously, I don't know games wise like what to expect here because it does seem I, like I, we know a very large chunk of the 2019 lineup for them already you know between yeah. between the three gears games and battle toads and uh, i know Battle-Dow? exactly what to expect guys <laughs> all right that? you're gonna you're gonna Uh-oh. hear first here on the jump up supercast uh-huh. all right industry insider they're gonna acquire Platinum Games and bring back Scalebound, boy. Oh, oh baby, shit. boy! If that no. happened, no, it's not happening. But boy, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Don't so put that evil out there. I, I, I think what we can sort of expect, and I think this pairs with the other piece of news that came out today. Um, PSX is not happening this year. Correct. Mm. PSX um, is dead. PSX is dead now. Uh, it's what they had to give up for crossplay. Of course. <laughs> they had to give up for crossplay. We'll get the crossplay in a minute. But uh but yeah, but yeah, I, I think it's interesting that, you know, the year Microsoft is trying this thing, Sony is not. Um and if we all saw PSX last year, uh it was I think we can say not to be too harsh, it was it was lackluster to be generous, right? It was two hours. Well, I go them. as far as saying it's the worst press conference I've ever seen from a first party. Just flat <laughs> yeah. out. It was I mean, it was a dumpster fire. You know, I it, was, it really was. I was pretty miserable. It was two hours of a bunch of developers like sitting on a couch talking on stage, but not like about their games, just sort of about whatever. It was strange. Mm. And having a crowd in front of them get more and more confused in what they <laughs> showed up for. Uh. But uh PSX beforehand was this was a thing that I loved. I loved the Sony P- E3 plus PSX duo because E3 was for their big first party. PSX was for your weird third parties, your smaller games, your, you know, you sprinkle a little bit of first party stuff in there. Mm. But this is where you show off games like Nino Kuni 2, game where you show off Yakuza, where you show off, you know, the indie reel uh, for, for games that are coming out. And, uh, you know, I think that 
if I don't know what X18 will entail, but uh, I think that it'll be they should aim for something like that. If I were Phil Spencer, I mean, but just right? having this hands-on event for fans, you know, is yeah. is a good thing. You know, having it is this- taking place during the fan fest. Yeah, uh, you know, ha- ha- having this event just centered around Xbox and people who love Xbox, you know? Hey, that's uh, me. That's you. Hey, 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 Brandon, that's... you can get so many achievements there. I think that's part <laughs> of why PSX was such a great thing, right? Like, it was a love letter to PlayStation fans, you know? It yeah. really was. From, not just the conference, but just the the entire event, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so if Xbox can replicate that, if Xbox can get its hardest... Co- of its its most core fans, you know, to attend this event to have a great time, and then you know, announce some pretty cool things. Like this could be a cool annual thing they do, you know, because just just having E three it probably isn't enough, you know, realistically. Uh, and I think it benefits Microsoft to have this because they they're trying it with inside Xbox too, right? To have they really are focusing on having more a deeper connection with their audience you know mm-hmm. and that's exciting like i'm i'm glad to see microsoft pr- pursue this you know and mm-hmm. i'm glad and it, it just in general they're very like there's a fire under them right now you know like they you know that ne- next gen they want to be on top you know yeah and, and i think they realize that to do that like the best way is hey let's please our base audience because they're the ones who are going to evangelize us next gen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they made a so. lot of mistakes. You oh, know? It, and a it, lot. The weird, the, well, <laughs> yeah, definitely. The weird part about the mistakes they made, and, and they're definitely mistakes because, you know, they, they lost a lot of, you know, potential fans and, and money out of it. But the weird thing about, like, people want to smash them still. And, the, oh, well, they did this. They did this. Well, like, and I always hear the, the whole um, always online, the, you know, can't sell your games thing that people try to bash on Xbox. I'm like, dude, first of all, it was six years ago. Get over it. <laughs> yeah. Second of all, they never actually did it. They and admitted it's like, that it's they like made a mistake. different leadership, you know, like, like the people yeah. who are in charge of those things are not there anymore, you know, like. Yeah, those mistakes. And they even, you know, publicly said those bad ideas. We're yeah. sorry, guys. We messed up. And that's up. actually the most interesting part about Phil Spencer, I feel, is like. He, unlike any other company head I see, is willing to admit, like, hey, we made a mistake, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, Will, I think Will's brought it up before. I don't know if he brought it up on the podcast, but, like, the way he talked about this very year, this E3, uh, when he talked to Giant Mom, he talked about Scalebound's cancellation in mm-hmm. such a frank way, in a, in a way where he was like, like, yeah, it was our fault, and, like, yeah. the, even if you don't accept our apology, but the, we totally understand that, but, like, from the bottom of our hearts, like, sorry, uh, you know? Yeah. Just, like... That it's very of- rare for the head of a major division of any company, let alone Microsoft, to come out in there and say full blame, right? And he and yeah. Phil Spencer said he's like, I was towards the top when that happened. I'm personally partially culpable for that too, and I'm really sorry to Kamiya. Like he specifically said, Kamiya saw I'm deeply sorry for what happened with Scalebound. And like that type of stuff, I mean, you I can't imagine any other executive doing that, right? Like Outside of like Owada uh, apologizing for the 3DS launch, like I don't, I can't think of another time that happened. Mm. And so I, you know, I think that that type of stuff. I mean, goodwill doesn't always get you far in the market, but I think that also events like this help with developer relations, right? Like if suddenly, you know, if he, if there are companies that were planning on PSX happening this year or planning on a conference in December. That can now Xbox can now say if you were going to want to show a game there, come show it here instead. Companies make note of that. You you know relations are are important. And PS4 picked up in this gen a lot of exclusive games that Sony sort of didn't have to work very hard for because they already had good relations with with these you know uh, companies like games like Nier Automata, games like Persona Five, games like Dragon Quest. That you know if if Microsofts can go out and do those outreach suddenly those exclusives aren't exclusives anymore, suddenly, you know, you have more reason to be able for a person like me to buy an Xbox. Extremely reminiscent, right, of, like, late-gen PS3, you know? I feel like, like, I I almost feel like Microsoft's taking straight out of Sony's playbook from last-gen, right? Where they really built up this goodwill with fans, with developers, you know? Like, uh, towards the end of the gen, you were seeing stuff like Mass Effect 3 was getting marketed for PlayStation, for example, right? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, whereas you know Microsoft towards the end of the gen la last time was really just focused on Connect and like Call of Duty, you know, and that that was like it for third parties, you know, <laughs> like the. <laughs> Uh, and I think it's kind of a, 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 re a role reversal this time around. I feel like it's, it's extremely similar to how last gen played out, just except now Microsoft's in the uh, bottom position. The roles have sort of flipped a little bit. Yeah. 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 And it's, it, I don't know. It's, I, I think it bodes well for Microsoft for next gen, like extremely well. We'll see, of course, how mm -hmm. things play out. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very interested to see how that goes. Yeah. One final thing. This is the type of venue. Show off Battletoads. This is a perfect Battletoads. Oh, yeah. oh I think Come so. On. I think Battletoads is going to get its gameplay reveal here. Um, I think. My but... long shot hopes oh. is uh, they show off Halo Infinite gameplay. I don't think it's going to happen. No, but... that feels unlikely. That feels <laughs> if that happens, that's crazy. Extreme long shot. But if they uh, premiere Halo Infinite... My personal <laughs> want or my personal interest, because I just need to know what the fuck are they going to do with this, is that the Gears of War, that fucking uh, Funky Pop. Funko Pop? Yeah, that Funko Pop. <laughs> funky Pop. <laughs> that funky shit. Pop. I don't even... I wanna Man, know. Gears Funko, I forgot that, that happened. That totally oh, happened. Boy. I want to know what That's... the fuck they're planning with this. I want to know what to... I want to, dude, actually, you know what? The... When I first saw that, I was like, oh, come the fuck <laughs> right? But then they announced, then they announced Gears yeah. 5, and it was like, now, in retrospect, because we know where Gears 5 is a thing, now we can be like, you know what? I'm kind of actually kind of excited for this stupid crap, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> like, and Gears XCOM's also happening, too. Yeah, like, that's you know, just... a thing, man. Holy shit. I love, man, I love Mario and Rabbids. What a yeah. great game. Uh -huh. So, Gears XCOM, bring it on, dude. Bring on the little Funko Pop, the Funky Pop. <laughs> bring on XCOM. Okay, this is cool. Uh, yeah, so, uh, good luck, I guess. Well, I'm going to watch that conference when it happens. I hope yeah. it's good. Yeah. Uh, also, speaking of, though, of, of, Brandon mentioned it earlier, and companies making decisions that, that are to appeal to the fans, uh, Sony is now on cross-play for Fortnite. Oh! We did it! Yeah. I think, I think Fortnite? they saw how much trouble they were getting in, you know, I think they saw, like, Shit, like, this is really gonna fuck us over next gen if we keep this shit going, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, for a while, it was concerning how very little self-awareness there was from them. I'm glad to see that, you know, they've kind of realized, oh, let's let's pump the brakes here, you know? <laughs> let's, yeah. uh, uh, just because we're on top now doesn't mean we're gonna be on top forever, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, um, crossplay and cross-progression, I think, which is even bigger deal. Yeah, big but, thing to um, mention. Uh, it's good. So far, it's only Fortnite, right? Yeah. Um, but if the door is open, like, I, I can't imagine them saying no to anyone. In fact, yeah. I would be, if I was a third party and I said I wanted crossplay and someone said no, I'd be pretty pissed, you know? So I don't think that's going to be the case. It's probably just open for everything. Yeah. Um, no, this is good, though, because I think there's a genuine concern, right? Uh, this E3, when Fortnite on Switch launched, and a lot of people weren't able to put their accounts on Switch, yeah. right? I think, I think... That sparked a pretty big thing in a lot of people. Like, holy shit! Like, I'm playing on PlayStation. Does that mean I'll never be able to play on anything else ever? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and that's a scary thought for a lot of people, right? It's like I don't want to be stuck into one ecosystem, you know? Because you have money invested, right? Like every yeah. season. If you've been playing since season one, you have fifty bucks per battle pass in this game. Yeah. You know, like, and uh, it's this thing where it's like I don't know if I want to invest money where it's it. In, in a platform that it's just gonna stay there, you know? Like, it, I, I don't want that, you know? Uh, and so it's, it's good that Sony's doing this. It's good, it's good that they finally uh, let, let loose on this issue, because yeah. it was really stupid of them from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and because crossplay is just cool. Like, I, like it's, you yeah. know, there is so much uh, uh, video games that can be like console warrior crap online, yeah. right? But there was something that was just great about my friend who is a big Xbox guy. He's just always been in the Xbox, you know, side of things. Uh, it's, it's the, it's, he has an Xbox One. He's the only modern system he owns. But me being like, okay, I have my Switch. Let me load up Fortnite and like becoming friends with him on Epic. And then just me playing games with him for the first time in years. Right. Because I had had an Xbox for so long. 
that now I actually can just play with my friend and like catch up with him by playing video games, by playing Fortnite, because he loves playing Fortnite. Like that is, you know, just an ex- you know, kids that go home every day at the job I work at that talk about Fortnite. Some of them have PS4, some of them have Xbox, a couple of them have Switches. The PS, the the Xbox and the Switch kids play together. The PS4 kids can't. And they complain about it, like, regularly. So it's not just internet nerds, it's 12-year-olds, you know? Like, it's, <laughs> it, it hits a lot of different people in just, like, little minor ways that you don't think about until you come across it. And so I'm very happy that it is now becoming available. Yeah. Um, they, that's so, only for Fortnite, yeah. though, right? They're not thinking so, about yeah. other games? It could it's be other for, games. It, if it, not for my, Minecraft, right? Well, the thing with... Okay, so, like, Minecraft, the issue is, like, now Microsoft has to port over their new version of Minecraft to PS4, they didn't plan on it before because it's like, why would we when Sony's not on crossplay, right? Yeah. But I think they uh, need you. I'm pretty so. sure Minecraft, the the new version of Minecraft, will be on PS4 at some point. You know, yeah. I'd yeah. be very shocked yeah. if it wasn't. I'm, the Better Together um, update only ca- came to Xbox and uh, everything but PS4, basically. So they, which, that's speaking why. of Minecraft, I wonder if that's a big part of it too, right? Because I, I wonder if the thought comes into their head at some point, right? That if we don't allow crossplay. We can't have Minecraft on PS5. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. You know? uh, and, and that's a big deal, you know? That's a big deal. So I, want, I wonder if that's also part of it, right? There, and did you see what... I think their official statement uh, was just some sort of... Now that we have, like, an update to our terms of service, now we can allow it. Yeah. Like, in the, they used some excuse about... not. Bullshit. We couldn't do it because of terms of updates. No, That's they they, they made various kind of <laughs> arrogant excuses. It's like they were being yeah, real they were being scumbags, scumbags it, right? And that's partially why I thought they wouldn't change because I thought like, man, they've made such a clear stance on this. I mean, you know? even just so recently, right? Like it was like a few weeks ago where yeah. where the CEO of of uh, SIE is like. This is the best yeah. place to play, or whatever the fuck he said. It yeah, was, it was, yeah. yeah. If, if PlayStation's the like best it. place to play, why would we want anyone else pl- with them playing with anyone else? That and was such like, a recent yeah. quote too. That it's yeah. like, dude, I hope, it, I hope that it wasn't in the cards at that point yet, because <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because, <laughs> <laughs> but it's also great to me that if it wasn't in the cards at that point, like, man, what a crazy fast turnaround, you know? Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's good that like they saw now, like th- this is the time to do it. You know, you don't. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that it's them realizing, like, we don't want to go into next gen being in the bad guy yeah. position. And know? also, I think probably they, I mean, you know, I we don't have the specifics, but Matt Piscatella is a guy uh, who works for the MPD group. He, he has access to more numbers than we do. And he sort of was, like, speculating that, you know, they might be seeing it on the back end a little bit. Like, they might be seeing that, like, you know, people, that they're actually not losing money by having crossplay. They're actually making more money. Uh, yeah, I wonder how much it's, like, is is like did v buck sales go down on playstation you know what i mean yeah like like and i wouldn't be surprised right because when you realize oh i'm locked to playstation you don't want to you you're not as willing to part with your money you know (laughs) because you know there's sort of this idea that in the future i could keep my fortnite account moved to wherever wait does rocket Um, league have microtransactions in it Okay. It does. You can pay yeah, for like cosmetics. So that, now it's just gonna get. But thrown like, out I'm it. sure like the doors are open. Like everything that already supports cosplay on other platforms. Like I, I would, I, pretty yeah. sure that that's gonna be a thing. Eventually, for, it's gonna be a thing. Uh, yeah. Those games on PS4, and I hope games that haven't embraced crossplay yet start doing so. You know, because I think there's no reason not to. And like, if I'm a third party publisher, the way I would think of it is like, hey, if if players can play together and they can take their account anywhere, they're more likely to spend on microtransactions. Much, yeah. You know, which let's be honest, every major game does at this point. Uh, every major multiplayer game uh, from third party publishers. So it's like, hey, like if I'm a third party publisher, I would seriously look into, and they all have their own account systems too. You know, so it's like, yeah. uh, if I was a third party, I would heavily look into starting to enable crossplay and and cross account. A cross progression because it seems to only benefit them you know mm-hmm. and there was i mean and there's just a neat trick to logging into my x because like was when I, I played my xbox and i had fortnite downloaded i and i to and i loaded it up and i saw all my stuff from the switch version i was like this is crazy wow this is magic i saw a magic thing in a video game went from one machine to another machine how'd that happen you know like <laughs> we, we you know we cross play is just a cool 
trend and i hope it continues and sony was the biggest block on that so now now hopefully like Moose said every single multiplayer game sort of looks at this yeah. in the cards um but moving on from crossplay, we we got a little a little weird one here uh mostly this might just be a will rant uh red dead redemption 2 got announced the file size for it it's 105 gigabytes <laughs> It's a big game. Oh, big boy game. Oh, this is the cost of a big boy game. That is that is three and a sixth Nintendo Switches. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and I mean, and I think that like, I just want to have a brief t- conversation about a. Uh, th- this is like every game now must be installed to your system when you play it, right? Mm. That's part of this, and also that Blu-rays on PS4 specifically are 50 gigabytes so you're having to download a 55 gig update for this game no matter what that doesn't count other updates later down the line this doesn't i think include multiplayer so where is there a point where madness yeah where file size becomes prohibitive right where genuinely like see i always thought i made issue with this from the beginning of the gen like 500 gigs (laughs) was not enough i knew it from then you know like, 500 gigs on this gen is as bad as 12 gigs was last gen, you know? Because of just how goddamn big every game is. And, le- you know, like you said, physical or digital, it doesn't matter, right? You are installing the same amount of space, you know? Um, so, it's... it. I if, if you have a launch console and you don't have an external hard drive... That's <laughs> like, yeah. We're sorry. Yeah. Good We're luck. Sorry. Yeah. Good it's, luck. Because it's a have fifth to of your, of your PS4. This is my situation yeah. right now. And also, <laughs> God damn, why? Yeah. And like, Saf, you're not in a place where there's great internet. Oh hell no. Right. If you run the numbers, you're probably gonna not be able to play Red Dead Redemption Two for a day <laughs> after you buy it. Uh, you know? <laughs> like that's insane. Crazy stuff right there, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I. It's kind of like my beef when it happened yeah. with uh, Doom. Because Doom had the exact same problem. Doom was the yeah, other was like, one. Yeah. Doom was what, 60, 60 gigs? Good. Yeah, Doom was like yeah. 70. Was it 70? Well, that's close. I re- yeah, but- no, but like, I remember not buying Doom for an incredibly long time because on my launch PS4, I thought, I can't afford to free up enough yeah. space for this. Like, looking at the games Dude, that I play I, regularly. I have the same problem. I have a launch PS4. That motherfucker is <laughs> all the <day. laughs> I like, I cannot fucking get... Yeah, I, I honestly I have PS Plus. I've I've missed out on so many games because I'm just too lazy to deal with the, the fact that it's going to tell. I mean, I think they've changed yeah. it recently, so whatever. But like, I just I was getting so sick and tired of it being like you can't download this. Like I fucking know. All right. Yeah. <laughs> on my like, base my PS4, PS4 doesn't have enough space. On my base PS4, I had more games deleted than on my system that I had bought. Yeah. Right. Because oh, like you just could. Yeah. And so you're just yeah. you know. I mean, I don't. One maybe the next console should just be five terabytes. I don't know. Just like bite the bullet. But even then, I think that, uh, you know, maybe it's just an unfortunate fact of reality now. And because, you know, as graphics get better, as, you know, things get higher and higher quality, they'll get big. But I don't know if 105, if they couldn't have worked a little bit Surely harder to compress it. Surely you think they could compress it a little bit. Though, Surely, right? a little like, bit. <laughs> get it under 100 oh, gigs yeah. is all we ask. Yeah. Rockstar, do me a favor. Call the fucking magicians over at Nintendo, and they will show you how to turn that 105 <laughs> fucking gigabytes into probably like 20. All right? I'm fucking telling you. It's, these guys over here yeah. are magic. I remember yeah. when I downloaded 3D World, I... I thought I I thought it was something went wrong well, when they gave me the file size. Like, is this the demo? Am I is something wrong? Because it was like it was less yeah, than two like gigs for sure. It was yeah, it was like one point four something. Yeah, it was like oh my god. <laughs> you like, I mean, you know, and I mean, and like the reports are. I mean, like we don't have tons of stuff, but you know, a couple of of people have been asked about this, and sort of the general thing is, this is incredibly low on the list to basically priorities for these companies right like they could i mean look what happened with doom doom was 70 they got it down to less than 30 on switch you know like which like i so i understand to an extent you know but like yeah. what it's 105 gigs you know and it's like even these 50 gig games it's like you're passing on that to the consumer who then either has to you know only have one game on their fucking uh console at a time 
Or they have to invest in bigger hard drives, and that kind of sucks for the consumer, you know? And plus, then you have to have this ugly external yeah. hanging around, and so, like, I it's not yeah. ideal for and, a, and I have an external. I have a two terabyte external. I wish I had a bigger one, but it's still, I got a decent amount of room still left, but it's like, damn, dude, like, I, I could use a 10 terabyte, please. And that's not saying that there might be a day one patch, you know, there, I mean, there's going to definitely be a huge update. I mean, I remember for Grand Theft Auto 5, it was an additional 10 gigs to download GTA online when it went live. That, that shit came with a separate fucking disc. <laughs> yes. Just to download the shit <laughs> on the Xbox 360. You know, none of you had that experience before, but my problem was with the fucking Xenoblade Chronicles X for the fucking Wii U. Because if you want, to, oh yeah, I do remember that. Like, you had to download twenty-two gigs. I think it was. It, I think it was twenty-two gigs of extra data of pre-installed data, so that it runs as yeah. smoothly as it could have, which was insane. It was. It was. I think if you downloaded, because they gave you like twenty different packs that were all like, this one makes the loading for the mechs faster. This one makes the character creation <laughs> yeah. look better. This one makes this look like it was like you like had to pick it. I remember being like, okay, I want these two because I'm managing my space. Because if I download all of these, this is bigger than my base Wii U yeah, file, which is like storage 32 space. Thirty-two gigs. Your base Wii U. Thirty-two gigs. And it's like, what the fuck am I gonna do with all the <laughs> with all the rest of the games I have downloaded here? Like, just. Yeah. So I mean, so I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, it is just a undercovered thing that like every consumer has to deal with, and it sucks. It just sucks, mm. you know. Like, because it, you know, there, for a very long time, I was cool with it, like last gen with downloading games, because there was the understanding. Well, if I want to not have to deal with space, then what you call it? Then then let's just you know buy the disc. Yeah. Fine. Not anymore. Uh, but it's fine. We are here. That was sort of the news for this week. There's a couple of things we could hit, but we don't, you know, we we, we did enough time on the news and we hit some big topics. Mm. Uh, but now we get a special opportunity to move on to really what is the most valuable part of any podcast. The first post rankamania edition of The List. The, the list. list. That was good. Yeah. I like that. More than sync, yeah. Uh, so, last... Two weeks ago, God, it feels so far away. Musamil, you brought Luigi's Mansion because of its, the announcement of Luigi's Mansion 3. Masterful search mm -hmm. engine optimization on your part. <laughs> now, now it comes to Brandon. It's me. So, um, we actually, you're a little bit wrong because we had a god hand after the Rank Mania. So. Oh, I mean, that, that was, that's the, the Game Club is a separate cinematic universe. <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, it's not. Because the Game Club games are on the list. They're like the Netflix shows of uh, the cinematic universe. All right, they still they're exist. not still in the timeline. Yeah, well, they are. God um, Hand is the Iron Fist of. You know what? No, we're we're selling the, the the Game Club short. Go watch the Game Club, or or, or you can watch it on YouTube, uh, or or at least go listen to it. Game Club, good time. You know, honestly, now that I think about it, it might be like you know, like the DC movies are bad, but the DC TV shows are good. I think that the Game Club is the DC movie like shows to our to this podcast dc movies but it's fine yeah anyways brandon go ahead <laughs> anyway go watch go listen to the damn game club it's real good time but that being said with the theme i love themes god i love them. they're so good mm -hmm. uh this is we had a, a a little bit of a sad theme earlier this today uh oh at the beginning of this episode uh, announcing all this, the studio closures. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad it was me because I decided what game I wanted to add over a week ago when uh, I heard about Telltale. Maybe very upset, but I said, you know what? I need to honor Telltale. Next game I'm adding to the list is The Walking Dead Season 1. Oh, hey. boy. Timely. Timely. Um, yeah. Not I really the visual. Not though. play this, so I'm probably not going to have any opinion on it. Also, yeah, I'm probably going to try to avoid spoilers. I've played it. <laughs> I uh, have also you? played it, yes. All right, so that's yeah. three of you. So you Noah, know well. you better get on that shit after this because it is a good fucking game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to play it, so. Although, maybe you'll be a little discouraged now because you know the story is never going to finish. So. <laughs> it's fine. You can watch <laughs> so You can just out. play season well, one like, and feel fulfilled. Each season has its own like, story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Season yeah. One, Stand alone season one. Yeah, you can yeah. play standalone season one, and that's absolutely fine because I will recommend that to anyone. Yeah, well, talk about standalone yeah. season one. Talk about it and where yeah, it should be on the list. So, man, season one of The Walking Dead. It is a game 
that brought Telltale to the top of their game. And unfortunately, maybe it also was the beginning of the end because they got a little too cocky and I guess took on too many projects and that kind of fucked them. But it's a great game. Uh, so it sold a shit ton for a reason because people were talking about it, man. This was a game that when it came out, every YouTuber was playing this game. Uh, every Twitch, I don't know if Twitch was a thing or maybe it was just a baby thing back then. It's not as big as it was now, but people were yeah. playing the shit out of this game. And it was a thing that not only did people love to play this game, people love to watch it. Yeah. You know, this is definitely a couch game or a, you know, a streaming game or uh, a YouTube let's play game that people just, man, they love to watch this game. You know, it's, it's just as fun to play as it is to watch. It's a show. Although I mean, it's, for a lot of, if you're not it's playing, a, it's, it's a, a show. Yeah. It really is. Although I, I will say, I guess it's it's not super amazingly fun to play, right? I mean, it is. You know, it's weird. It's a very weird game because so in this game, it's if you ever played the Telltale game, it's basically a point and click adventure, but mixed in with like Mass Effect's like um, choice system. I guess what is it? A conversation, the choices and stuff. It's like a it's like a mashup of that. It's almost a visual novel with like voice acting and, and like cutscene direction, right? Like, yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah. So, it's really you're you're playing through a show, but you're controlling this one character. You're and his name is Lee in the first season, mm-hmm. and you're you're controlling Lee. And I tell you, he's a very likable guy. Mm-hmm. So at the beginning of the game, too, you know the game. If it does one thing right, better than anything, and almost better than any game ever, it's storytelling. This game tells an amazing story, and yes, it's set in the Walking Dead universe. The same one, and not the TV show, though. Don't get don't get it twisted. This no, is it not is. the TV show universe. Mm. No, it's the it's the comic universe. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, this, that's a different. So the, it takes place in the same universe as the comic books. Uh, you get, I see, you see Glenn in the first season, but I think that's all you get. You get also, for, uh, you get, you, you see Herschel's kids too. Oh, you do. You see Herschel. I, yeah, I actually, you see Herschel too. Yeah. yeah, you do. I forgot about that. That's only like in so the yeah, first there's... couple episodes, though. Like by the end, it's like fully removed from all the other characters. Yes, yes. Yeah. They do a little, little bit of. Oh, here, you know, they let you know you're in the Walking Dead universe. But Lee's a great character. They they develop him great. You, the first time you see him, though, he's in a cop car. Yeah. So you're like, oh, what's wrong with this? You know, this, oh, is this dude a criminal? Am I playing as a bad guy? You learn Lee is not a bad guy at all. He's very far from it. Mm-hmm. He's just, he made a mistake. Like, you know, yeah. some people do. Flawed individual. Pretty much. Yes. And you you meet the most important character of all time. Her <laughs> name is Clementine. She's a little girl. And she can't find her parents. She's home alone. She's stuck up. She's hiding out in her treehouse. This is a zombie apocalypse shit hitting the damn fan. And this little girl, he, he's a good guy. He can't leave this little girl by herself. No way. Mm-hmm. So he takes her and he's like, I'm going to protect you. And damn it, does he do that? He <laughs> protects her through everything. This it's just you fall in love with this dynamic of Lee and Clementine and Lee being able to protect her and you know, teaching her how to survive in this in yeah. this new world that they have to deal with. And, you know, being like, we're going to find your parents. And also just, you know, keeping her head, you know, keeping her head up. Yeah. Basically, the circus father in this situation. Yeah. yeah. It's and a very father-daughter seeing, daughter relationship. And, and it's not easy stuff that you're witnessing. You know, you're, people are dying. People are betraying each other. Uh, you know, families are going to are getting torn apart. You know, without spoilers, there's just a lot of stuff happening. It gets hard. And, and Clementine's having to watch all this, but Lee's there and he's, you know, he's making sure that he's doing whatever he can to try to teach her the right and wrong and how to survive. And man, I love it. I love it so much. Yeah. Because it's, it's not even an ordinary situation that they're being put in. Like, Lee's learning how to deal with this shit and also learning how to, like, make sure Clementine's prepared for this new changes as well. And it's very <laughs> interesting yeah. the situations that they get placed in and the uh, difficulties that they have to go through as well, uh, mm-hmm. and it's always been exciting from those uh, moments. From every single episode, there was actually some point in there where it's like there was never a point where it's just in not best, interesting. There's not. There really isn't. And the best part about it too is is not only are Lee and Clementine great, you're surrounded by a cast of other characters that you care about too. Like you got Kenny, <laughs> and people love Kenny. The dude is awesome. 
<laughs> there are Kenny, like- it's hard. It's hard to deal with Kenny because Kenny is like. I, I like Kenny a, lo- a fair amount in season one, right? He's just a guy who wants to take care of his family, right? Fair yeah. amount of it. Get on the boat. Yeah, he, he wants to find the freaking boat, man. <laughs> but then after that, he, Kenny he, fall- Kenny in season two and three gets wild. I'm like, oh, Kenny, what yeah, are you doing, well, brother? Uh, well, he becomes, yeah, he he's, he's a very irrational man sometimes. But, like, <laughs> you can't help but love him, right? Because, yeah. like, he he just, he, he, he thinks without acting. Or he acts without thinking, sorry. and But he always means well. But he just doesn't think about what he's doing and what what, what it's going to affect other people around mm-hmm. him. But he's always doing it what he thinks is the best for everybody. But so he can be he kind of he can be an asshole. But like all these characters have such crazy dynamics. Yeah. That yeah. like that you can love or hate them so much. And also at the drop of a hat, they're gone too, which is tough. And they will remember they do things. they do a good job of of managing that. Uh, one of my favorite yeah. things in, in all of uh, The Walking Dead yeah. is just the little like end of episode. Here's how what other people chose in these pivotal moments, right? Yeah. Because one, in a lot of ways, it's honest, right? With like Mass Effect, they yeah. try to obscure a whole lot. Like, what were the choices that matter? What were the choices that didn't? And with Walking Dead, they're willing to be like, you know, that moment where you chose him or her, that mattered. That was the thing. That was a moment. You know, Blank will remember that. Is always. It's become a meme at this point, right? Yeah, and like a yeah. lot, and like to be honest, a lot of those times where like you kind of tick someone off, it's like that doesn't actually matter. But yeah, it was fun to see in those pivotal moments, the you know the moments where you're where there's the clock ticking down, which I also like a lot. Mm-hmm. They don't give you a ton yeah. of time to consider your actions, so you sort of can sometimes end up making rash decisions that you will regret. Which is the best thing about it, exactly. Yeah, yeah because it puts you in that scenario where. I have to make a really tough decision, but I don't have the time, yeah. and that's great. Uh, yeah, and so, I mean, you know, it's fun to see, like, like sometimes there would be times where I would be in the, in the majority, and I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense, and sometimes I would be in the minority, and I'd be like, whoa, I can't believe that everybody chose this <laughs> thing over this thing. Yeah, exactly, and you almost think about it, and you're like, did I, am I, did I do the right thing? Yeah. You know, like at the no, I'm the confident. Ben should, think, ben should die. It's, I'm cool with it. If you, <laughs> you, at the time, you think you think in your head, you know, oh shit, like did I mess up? Like it, it's cool. I like that. You, yeah. You, you look at it and you're like, oh, I was in the ten percent of people who made this choice. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, am I a piece of shit? Yeah. And it was fun to like <laughs> see different people like talk about the game, right? Because you know, you know, some people are like, you know, I'm all about is just Lee and Clementine. Everybody else is ancillary. Keep the ones close to you, close to you, and everybody else, whatever happens, happens, right? And then mm-hmm. and so and so, you know, like they were more callous in their decisions versus people that were like, no, we need the whole group to operate. We need to try to smooth things out. That type of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. and I loved just seeing that you could take different approaches. Sort of like, I mean, you know, a lot of The Walking Dead was sort of. It was this came at the peak of sort of the zombie craze, and so much of the of zombie mania was about like what would you do in this situation? Like how would you manage this apocalypse? You know the zombie survival plans, all that stuff that people would make. Yeah. And I think The Walking yeah. Dead did a good job of presenting a well told story while also still only having the capacity to sort of like uh. Lee is a defined character, but there is still like moments where you can be like come in with your own approach to how you want to sort of look at the game. Yeah. So before I get to the negative parts about this game, yeah, and I want to get there because I, you know, I feel like it's fair to mention them. Mm-hmm. I just want to mention the one last thing about this game uh, that I want to praise, and in the fact that it is the first video game of all time that made this man cry. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, I cried. I cried at the end of this game. Uh, tears were streaming down my face. <laughs> I was trying to hold it back. I could not do it anymore. A week later, I beat Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box. This game made me weak, and I cried at the end of that game, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will's, Will's a man that cries, and, and I, I think I cried at, like, when you leave your grandma at Wind Waker when I was six years old, because I'm just a baby. But, like, yeah, in The Walking Dead, I was like, you know, when you get the end, and what, and he's giving the speech to her, you're just sort of like, oh, man. Like, oh, like, be good. Like, oh. This I is- was crying through that whole fucking speech, dude. Yep. The whole thing. I'm just sitting there. But like a bite in my lip, just trying not to be like, I'm oh, my roommate could walk out of the room at any time. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want it to happen. And I'm just, I, I lost it, dude. I'm just fucking tears are just pouring down my face. And I'm like, if he walks out, he's going to make fun of me, but I don't yeah. give a fuck. And anymore. that's where like the choice system actually works in great effect as well, because you're choosing what you want to say to, uh, uh yeah, that yeah. person. 
what is oh, God, and, yeah. and you believe God. in that moment that like this child is listening and what you're saying will matter yeah, yeah. you do and it's the only time i think i don't know man it's it the worst part is i wish i could go back and play it again like erase my memory and play it from the mm, beginning yeah right? mm-hmm. i just wish i could do it over and over again yeah for sure <laughs> like just play it fresh i know because you play it again it's not going to be the same sure it's still going to be cool but man i wish i could just do it over um but there are some bad things about this game mm-hmm. and it's a thing that holds through all the telltales games <laughs> their their game engine it's a little janky uh, oh yeah <laughs> i lost my save two times when i was first playing through the walking dead uh, season. oh no that's never happened to me but i will say you know the the game's very you can get real glitchy sometimes very so. framey some of the yeah, action the- scenes are very hard to pull off not because they're difficult but because the engine is like running at half speed yeah, the frame rate dies in the in halfway through stuff. You know, there's in the Walking Dead season two. It happened to me. Like character models would, that weren't supposed to be there would just be popping up to <laughs> and stuff. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? You know, this, yeah, it was. I've seen a lot of glitches in their games. Yeah. Uh, I don't really remember a ton in the Walking Dead season one, other than this real bad slowdown. Yeah, and you know the slow pace. I will uh, say that you know during the point and click parts where you're just Lee walking around. Yeah. Sure, it's kind of it's kind of slow paced yeah you know you just kind of walk around talk to people maybe solve a little bit of a puzzle which is really just pick up an item and bring it over here and interact it with this you know specific thing um so it's a little slow yeah and the action scenes are not very super engaging yeah like the the action scenes like we were like having to line up the stick take a headshot or like mash a button Mm -hmm. like a lot of that stuff is sort of they've definitely gotten a lot better oh yes give them that Yes. Over the years, Telltale got a lot better at their action scenes. Some yeah. of them are like actually really well done. Even just the jump from that to uh, The Wolf Among Us yeah. was a huge jump in action. Oh, yeah. Uh, You're but, 100% right. Um, yeah. And my other thing, my biggest complaint is that I think that a lot of the cast is sort of very meh. Like outside of sort of Kenny, Clem, and Lee, everybody else is sort of very ancillary or like. Like, the only one I can remember off the top of my head is Larry, who was the old man, and, like, I just hated him. Like, you know? Yeah. Well, you got a couple cool, decent ones, but, yeah, I guess, for the most part, there's some insufferable pieces of shit in there. Yeah. And, like, I, you know, I think it part is partially by design, but, you know, I yeah. think the ones that, like, you're supposed to, like, you're sort of always, like, meh on. Carly was cool, I think, the reporter lady, but besides that, I don't know if I could name you many Yeah, others. she was super yeah. cool. I liked her a lot. Yeah. But, uh... But yeah, so Brandon, we've talked a lot about this game. Mm-hmm. Where do you think it should go on the list? Well, I've talked over and over and over again about how I weigh gameplay and all sorts of stuff. You know, gameplay to me is very important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but all that being said, I think this game should. I'm gonna go with underneath Okami. Underneath Okami, above Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. Interesting. Saf, where do you feel? Uh, I wouldn't put it that high. Like, it's a great game, but I wouldn't... Mm, maybe... Maybe lower than Valkyria Chronicles. That's where I kind of feel about it. That's sort of where I was looking. Yeah. Okay. I mean, my main thing was, I think it should at least go above Danganronpa and Phoenix. Right? Yeah. Yes, I agree yeah. with that. Mm-hmm. Because I think I think it tells a more cohesive story. Like I'm personally more attuned, maybe to like the aesthetic and the style of Phoenix Wright and Dangarampa. But I think like as a, as the actual beginning to end story, which is the most important part of these games, I think Walking Dead season one is stronger. Yeah. Neither of those games made me cry. Yeah. <laughs> Though Kira Chronicles Remastered is a very good strategy game, so is Fire Emblem Awakening. Yeah. So I want to put it just below it right Valkyria and above. I'm Adam. cool with that. I think it should be above Valkyria, at least, but... I mean, you can convince me. Oh, you can attempt to, if you want to. Valkyria Chronicles did not make me cry. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? <laughs> you the ending? Uh, actually, I, I kind of... I got emotional with when, when, when what's-her-name... I want to get actually. Uh, to be fair, I got very emotional when that happened, yeah. too. Yeah. I was I was. Swearing, I was going to say... But it didn't make me cry. Uh... And I think I like the supporting cast of Alcura Chronicles more than I like the supporting cast of... It's true. Okay. I mean, I love Cherry. 
my stripper girl <laughs> became a single you know yeah. she she, she single left mom. Her, her ways in her past she's a single mom i love her so much <laughs> so i'm happy story, you remember her the story that i made for her was actually canon and i love it <laughs> rosie and isa also very good yeah. like that whole friendship i love yeah when it's like they'd start yeah, out but, hating each other and like rosie was a bit of a dick but then she kind of who's a racist yeah right? she's she was a racist <laughs> she, yeah, pretty much the thing as much as i love the characters in uh valkyria chronicles and but the actual character like they you don't get a real story out of a lot of the side characters yeah you just get their th- like oh, okay well i know backwards. what their characteristics are and their backgrounds but you don't really get a story in like i don't know lee and clementine's story is just it's something else it's next level yeah but I really like the gameplay of Valkyria Chronicles. I think the like active aiming during with paired with the strategy stuff is cool. I think yeah. that that it makes it unique among the realm of strategy games. And mm-hmm. uh, I think that also like they do a really good job like keeping the maps varied and sort of introducing new things along the way, uh, even if there are spikes of difficulty in Valkyria Chronicles. Yeah. So I think I would still put it yeah. below, but Taff might have been convinced. Uh, I want to put it below. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, the problem is like I get you, but there's still yeah, there, there's still I feel so it's a lot more that I enjoyed out of Valkyria Chronicles than it, out of Walking Dead. Although I do understand where you come from in regards to the situation, and yeah, it's a bit, it made it made this a little trickier for me to like put it below. Uh, and yeah, and maybe it's just I because mean, of me losing the two saves, but like losing my save on episode three and then episode four, then having to replay episodes two and three multiple times. Some parts of the of those middle episodes, especially, can really drag. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean that didn't. Yeah, I mean, I mean it didn't hit you saves. obviously, but that's like why, like you know, like while well, the no, beginning and I the mean, end of but, Walking Dead are incredible, like our but top moments. Walking Dead did not have that tank level from Valkyria. Chronicles. That tank level. It didn't have the tank level. Yeah, but you could. But if you know, it, if you learn how to beat it the first time, you could beat it the second time quite easily. Because I told you how to beat it, okay? <laughs> it's the only reason you knew how to beat that Zaff, level. Zaff was just a master of his craft. He knew exactly what to do. I told him to how do. to beat it. He knew, no, he just he's, he heard in his mind's eye what to do. He, he was no, smart. He was struggling real hard, and then I had to be like, Zaff, I know your pain. I played that level for like fucking an hour and a half. I figured it out. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, It's a formula. You just need to figure that out. Yeah, we lo- <laughs> Noah and News have both have both chosen to defer their votes yeah, on this one. That's true. Well, I'm put. Uh, you know, okay. Well, if that's your final decision, unless you change your mind the last second, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say above. What are you guys gonna say? Below. 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 Okay. But Brandon, you made it. You 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 really. That was a good little eulogy in many ways for Telltale, so thank you for that. You made me want to replay uh, that game. You honestly did. <laughs> good. I, if if somebody's out there listening to this podcast and you haven't played The Walking Dead Season 1, do yourself a favor. Give it a chance. All their games are also game. going on sale, so mm-hmm. you'll get it for cheaper. Yeah, and, and, it, and you know what? If if you don't have the opportunity or the platform, or any, it's on a lot of platforms. It's on like... So you probably do. If you have a phone, but you're good. If you don't have the money... Watch a playthrough. Sure. Watch somebody play it, man. It's a great game. I, I, high recommendation. You know, just just do it. Just like Nike. Just like <laughs> Nike. Uh, that is the list. That is the podcast for this week. I want to thank you all for listening. Uh, so the plugs for this week, of course, we always always twitch.tv slash jump up supercast. We stream twitter.com slash jump up supercast want to take a moment to specifically call out the game club that we did on god hand um, it was my choice for game and i really enjoy the conversation around god hand um you know a, a weird game to have a conversation about because there's not very many things like it in the course of video games so if you would do us the honor of listening to our conversation about that it would mean a whole lot and that can be found of course on whatever you're listening to this on more than likely, which could be youtube.com slash jump up supercast or on your favorite podcast streaming service. Of course, if you're on there, made it all the way to the end, give us a rating of five stars if you would be very, very generous. Um, but with all that being said, this is the Jump Up Supercast, and for the final phrase for everyone here, Noah.
Alrighty. So, this goes out to all the games that always bring a tear to our eyes, whether it's the story, the gameplay, or anything in between. Thank you so much for making these games, and it really genuinely touched our hearts. <laughs> Very good. So sweet.